But now we go to our top story. Democratic presidential candidates faced off in their first debate, hosted by NBC News in Miami, Florida, last week and displayed their extreme abortion agenda. Medicare for all guarantees every woman in this country the right to have an abortion if she wants it. And it is mind boggling to me that we are debating this on this stage in 2019 among Democrats, whether women should have access to reproductive rights. I think we have to stop paying defense and start playing offense. I just want to say there's three women up here that have fought pretty hard for a woman's right to choose. So I'll start with that. For pro-life analysis of the Democratic debates, we are joined in studio by Ramesh Panuru, senior editor for National Review. And joining us from Indianapolis, Indiana, is Sue Swayze Liebel, the National Pro-Life Women's Caucus Coordinator for the Susan B. Anthony List. Thank you both for joining us. Let's delve right into this. I want to take a listen to an exchange in the debate when moderator Lester Holtz asked Senator Elizabeth Warren whether or not she would put limits on abortion. Here's how the senator responded. Senator Warren, would you put limits on uh, any limits on abortion? I would make certain that every woman has access to the full range of reproductive health care services, and that includes birth control, it includes abortion, it includes everything for a woman. Warren dodged the question, but how important is this question on limits to abortion in this campaign, Ramesh? Well, I think we have seen that it's extraordinarily important to Democrats that their candidate be 100 percent committed to the abortion lobby's political positions. That's why Joe Biden flipped on taxpayer funding um, of abortion. He had a career-long record of opposing it, but he decided that in order to get the nomination this time around, he had to support it. And all of the other Democratic candidates on that stage are with him, and that's why none of them is going to say that there should be any limits whatsoever on abortion or its subsidization. Sue, what do you make of that? Well, I think it's critical that her non-answer was the answer. Um, Americans, though, are overwhelmingly uh, opposed to late-term abortion. Fully uh, or less than one in five approve of late-term abortion after the point where the baby can feel pain, which is when scientific evidence says the baby can feel pain. But it's, it's pretty apparent that all of the Democrats um, running for president are extreme on the abortion issue, not just Senator Warren. Um, President Trump made a very clear contrast um, on this issue. He, he even uh, supported legislation in Congress that would protect um, the babies who could feel pain at late-term abortions, which is what, of course, uh, the majority of Americans do. So I think that the contrast couldn't be more clear. One candidate took the abortion issue to a new extreme. Here's Democratic presidential candidate Julian Castro. I don't believe only in reproductive uh, freedom. I believe in reproductive justice. And, you know, what that means is that just because a woman, or let's also not forget someone in the trans community, a trans female, uh, is poor, doesn't mean they shouldn't have the right to exercise that right to choose. Ramesh, what does Castro's answer on abortion reveal about the Democratic Party's views on abortion today? Well, I think what it reveals is just how thoughtless and lockstep the Democratic Party now is on this issue. What Castro was saying was there is no abortion lobby buzzword or cause that he will not jump to embrace, um, even if it involves him in absurdity, like suggesting that people who can't biologically even become pregnant should have a right to abortion. Sue, so at one point, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand directly addressed all American women in speaking about her support yes. for abortion. As a pro-life American woman, what's your response to what Senator Gillibrand had to say? Well, certainly she doesn't speak for the women of Susan B. Anthony List or our National Pro-Life Women's Caucus, and, and not even all women in America, uh, for that matter. Um, you know, Nearly 45 years of polling, very consistent polling, has shown that there is no gender gap when it comes to late-term abortion. In fact, more women than men approve of limits on later-term abortion because the baby can feel pain. So she's actually off base factually uh, in addition to just assuming uh, that women are going to go along with her, and that's certainly not the case. Notably missing from the debate discussion was Vice President Joe Biden's flip-flop on his long-standing support for the Hyde Amendment. Is this bound to come up later on in the campaign? 
Well, I think that it's well, absolutely Joe Biden, an issue. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I, I think it's absolutely going to be an issue. Um, the uh, Trump campaign has a real contrast to draw here, where most of the public is on the side of pro-lifers. And the Democratic position on this issue, I think, is going to look extreme to a lot of people and, uh, and people even in the middle who aren't necessarily all the way with us as pro-lifers are uh, going to want to draw a line here that is not where the Democrats want it to be. And Sue, what was the point you wanted to make? That's exactly right. I was just going to say that he may have gotten a pass during the debate, but general election voters um, re will resent, uh, and all the polling shows that they don't want their, to be forced to pay uh, their taxes to fund abortion. In fact, Susan B. Anthony listed a poll uh, before the debates that showed that 55 percent of Americans don't want to pay uh, for taxpayer-funded abortions through Medicaid. And of those, 57 percent were independents and over a third were Democrats. Um, and then also in that poll, 50 percent of the people said that they would not support uh, Biden because of it. So again, um, once again, I think he, he is really off base. He's flip-flopped. And I, I, I think he's going to pay the price for it. Ramesh, I noticed there was a lot of talk about reproductive health care and women's rights, but rarely, rarely was the word abortion itself actually used within the debate. Was that strategic on behalf of the Democratic Party? Well, I think that Democrats instinctively understand that abortion is different from others' rights or mm -hmm. real rights. Um, you know, when people want to argue for free speech or the right to own guns, they're not nervous about using the word speech or mm. guns uh, or property or what have you. Abortion is the right that dare not speak its name. And that, I think, tells you something about their understanding of what the public really feels about this issue. Absolutely. Uh, Sue, many pundits are declaring Senator Kamala Harris the winner of the first Democratic debate. But what should our viewers know specifically about Harris's involvement with David Daleiden's undercover Planned Parenthood videos? That's right. Uh, those brave whistleblowers, uh, David and his crew, exposed Planned Parenthood's role in the harvesting and selling of baby body parts. And when she was attorney general in California, she actually turned on them, raided his house and other things. She was trying to protect the abortion industry. It was very inappropriate on, on her part. And, um, you know, those the Democrats during the debate on that, they talked a lot about... Um, corruption in Washington and trying to combat that, um, I, I, I worry that she's actually going to bring corruption. Her past behavior has shown that she will go to great lengths to protect the abortion industry. It's very inappropriate, and it would be uh, inappropriate for her to, to move forward because of that, in my opinion. Ramesh, finally, what was your overall takeaway of how these Democratic debates for 2020 compared to previous Democratic debates, specifically on the abortion issue? So. In the past, some of our viewers may remember the 1990s Bill Clinton campaign saying that abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. Again, sort of making a nod toward the ambivalence, at least, of the public on abortion. That kind of language, that rhetoric, that's not on the Democratic platform anymore, mm -hmm. and it's not part of the Democratic conversation anymore. They've become a more uniformly pro-abortion party, and we'll see, but I think that that is going to cost them in the election when it comes time to November 2020. As you said, we'll see. This is just the first of many debates to come. Thank you both for being here. Ramesh Panuru, Senior Editor of National Review, and Sue Swayze-Liebel, National Pro-Life Women's Caucus Coordinator for the Susan B. Anthony List.